Solving big problems requires big changes. But how do we get there? And what difference can one person make when we consider the overwhelming challenges facing our environment? I'd like to share with you the story of Plastic Free July. It was a campaign that started here in the very remote city of Perth back in 2011 with a handful of people who decided to make change to reduce single-use plastic. Just small changes in our daily lives, such as refusing shopping plastic shopping bags, finding alternatives to cling film and switching to bar soap. These decisions led to the Plastic Free July Challenge. Here's the thing about small changes. When lots of people come together and make small changes all at once, the impact can be extraordinary. This year, around the world, 250 million people joined us in Plastic Free July and we made a difference. Together, we avoided 825 million kilograms of plastic waste. This isn't plastic waste that went into a recycling bin. This was plastics that were never purchased or used in the first place. So how did we get there? And why did we start? The answer is, we didn't really try. It began one day back in 2011. It was one night after dinner and I went to put out the recycling. And as I did so, I remembered what I'd seen earlier that day. I was working at the time in local government and we'd been to visit a recycling facility. As I emptied my recycling into the bin, in my mind I pictured the mountain of waste. I knew where it was going and I suddenly realised that filling my recycling bin each fortnight, though it was a good thing to do, I wasn't really saving the planet. I went to work the next day and I said to my colleagues, I'm going plastic free next month, who wants to join me? So together with Amy and Nabila and a handful of our passionate volunteers, we just gave it a go. And it wasn't easy. It opened our eyes as we realised plastic was everywhere. We didn't have all the answers, but together we had some ideas. And this is how it started. We just shared ideas of what we did in our own lives, such as remembering our reusable, my son having to carry the shopping when we forgot the bag, lining the bin with newspaper, learning how to make almond milk, and this is my neighbour John, with his reusable produce bags. It was very homespun, it was grassroots, we didn't have a budget, and as you can tell, the high-tech nature of the iPhone 3, the photos were pretty blurry. <laughs> but we did it together, and it took a certain courage, particularly back then when people weren't really talking about this. The thing about making any changes is it needs to become a habit, so the more you do it, the easier it got. I remember the first time that I went into a cafe and ordered a drink without a plastic straw. Despite asking, I ended up with not one plastic straw, but two in my drink. <laughs> but the thing is, is that we weren't doing it alone. We were doing it in a really supportive community of people who were struggling with the same challenges and were finding ways to overcome them. People could really identify with this challenge that became known as Plastic Free July. What we were asking was different for different people and people could choose the steps that they were going to take in their daily lives. And people felt good about it, about remembering their reusables, finding new places to shop, going to farmers markets and local independent stores and connecting with their community and seeing their bins less full. People learnt new skills, and started to make food from scratch to avoid plastic packaging. There were flow-on effects too, such as a healthier diet that came along with eating more fresh local produce. And it started conversations with friends and family and as we shopped. And the scale quickly grew. 
from a few people giving it a try to thousands of people around the world. Right now, plastic pollution, along with climate change and air pollution, are the three greatest areas of environmental concern for, to communities around the world. Unlike some other issues, it's a very visual problem and there's no denying the source. It's our plastic. Plastics are made from fossil fuel. We're producing them in ever-increasing amounts. Half of it, roughly half of the plastic we produce, we use just once. And without adequate systems to capture and manage our plastic waste, it has become symbolic of our throwaway society. But one of the things about trying to reduce your plastics is that it really makes you think about what you're purchasing and using. Where has it come from? What's it made of? And what's going to happen at the end of it? Plastic pollution may not be the most urgent environmental issue facing our planet right now, but it's a gateway. For many people, taking steps to reduce their plastic footprint is the first step on a journey to reducing their carbon footprint. And some people took a few steps. They took it into their workplaces, into their schools, into their communities, into their businesses, and had those conversations. We were always doing the challenge ourselves, trying to learn how to make more choices in our own lives and sharing it in our communities. So we were part of this as well. Plastic Free July isn't just a campaign that's designed to reach ordinary people. It was made by ordinary people. We created online resources and tools like these posters for people to download. And because they were free for people to use and everything was open source, it meant that they were very quickly adapted, translated into other languages and shared widely around the world. Everything that we do, we test on the street because we wanted to make sure our message is clear and it speaks to everyone. And it does. Even the man that I interviewed who told me he was a self-confessed anti-environmentalist, he said, I'll do this for the turtle. It's not just about individual change. To solve this problem, we need our system to change. We need our governments to change and take action and business to take responsibility. But here's the thing about big change. It's got to start somewhere, and it often starts with an individual. Like the woman who took the Plastic Free July challenge into her workplace and shared it with her colleagues. At the same time, their customers were writing in, complaining about the amount of single-use plastic used in the business. That workplace was Air New Zealand, who this year, to mark Plastic Free July, announced that they were removing 55 million pieces of plastic from their operations. When we make change all together and we share stories, we start to create a new norm. Those positive images start to make, become common and the good behaviours become more visual and visible and the negative behaviours start to disappear. Once we do this, business and government starts to listen and we can start to change the culture. The term single use went from being a word that wasn't even common back in 2011 when we started to the word of the year in 2018. Plastic Free July has taught me a lot. I can't begin to understand it or even explain to you how this small challenge with no advertising budget has grown from a handful of people to 250 million people around the world. In our team, we refer to it as the magic of Plastic Free July. And the magic looks a bit like this. Small is beautiful. Do what you can where you are. A lot of people making a few small changes 
is more powerful than a few people making lots of changes. Be authentic and let our shared values speak for themselves. Use less stuff. Less is more responsible, less is more rewarding, and less is more empowering. Please join us and together we can turn the tide. Thank you.